Hi guys, have a wonderful day. In this video talk about how to properly charge a phone battery. Hey guys one minute, InfoRx helpful to your tech life, please subscribe our channel. Ok let's go to the topic. Can you damage a phone's battery by charging it too often or for too long? We round up the best battery care tips to keep your smartphone battery healthy for as long as possibility. Why is it that your phone's battery seems to get worse over time? At first it might have power to spare as you snuggle into bed at the end of the day, but as time goes on you find your battery is just half full by lunchtime. Partly it's how you use your phone, the apps you install, the junk you collect, the customizations you make, and the more and more notifications you receive, puts more strain on the battery. Read our tips on how to extend battery life, until we have newfangled technologies such as smart clothes that optimize wireless performance, we must learn how to charge a battery that keeps it healthy for as long as possible. Phone batteries, like all batteries, do degrade over time, which means they are increasingly incapable of holding the same amount of power. While they should have a lifespan of between 3 and 5 years, or between 500 and 1000 charging cycles, a 3-year-old phone battery is never going to keep going as long as a brand new battery. 3 things wear out lithium-ion batteries, number of charging cycles, temperature, and age. However, armed with our tips for best battery care practice, you can maintain your smartphone battery health much longer. First, let's briefly look at the technical terms used to determine phone battery life. What is a battery charge cycle? The life cycle of a lithium-ion phone battery is measured in charge cycles. A new battery will typically last between 300 and 500 charge cycles, maybe as few as two years if you aren't careful with your charging habits, which is what we are going to help you with here. This doesn't mean that your phone's battery will die after being charged a few hundred times, but its capacity will certainly diminish the more it is charged. Thankfully, there are ways to slow down the speed at which you burn through these cycles. One full charge cycle is counted when you've discharged 100% of your battery's capacity. It could take a few days to complete a full cycle. If you use 60% of your battery's capacity one day and then recharge it fully overnight, followed by using 40% the next day, you will have discharged a total of 100%, those two days adds up to one full charge cycle. When should I charge my phone? The golden rule is to keep your battery topped up somewhere between 30% and 90% most of the time. Top it up when it drops below 50%, but unplug it before it hits 100%. For this reason, you might want to reconsider leaving it plugged in overnight. Pushing in the last charge from 80 to 100% causes a lithium-ion battery to age faster. Maybe it's better to recharge in the morning instead, at the breakfast table or on your office desk. That way, it is easier to keep an eye on the battery percentage during charging. iOS users can use the Shortcuts app to set a notification when the battery level reaches a certain percentage. This is done under the tab, Automation, and then, Battery Level. Giving your phone a full recharge is not fatal for a phone battery, and it seems almost counterintuitive not to do so, but giving it a full recharge every time you charge it will shorten its lifespan. Likewise, at the other end of the scale, avoid allowing your phone battery to get below 20%. Lithium-ion batteries don't feel good about going too far below the 20% mark. Instead, see the extra 20%, at the bottom, as a buffer for demanding days, but on weekdays start charging when the warning for low battery level appears. In short, lithium-ion batteries thrive best in the middle. Don't get a low battery percentage, but also not too high. Should I charge my phone battery to 100%? No, or at least not every time you charge it. Some people recommend that you do a full 0 to 100% battery recharge, a charge cycle, once a month, as this recalibrates the battery, which is a bit like restarting your computer. But others disregard this as a myth for current lithium-ion batteries in phones. To keep your long-term battery life in good health, frequent, small charges are better than full recharging. With iOS 13 and later, optimized battery charging, settings greater than battery greater than battery health, is designed to reduce the wear on your battery and improve its lifespan by reducing the time your iPhone spends fully charged. When the feature is enabled, your iPhone should delay charging past 80% in certain situations, depending on location services that tell the phone when it is at home or work, when you are less likely to need a full charge compared to when you are traveling. The deeper you discharge a lithium battery, the more stress is inflicted on the battery. So, 
Topping up frequently extends battery life. Should I charge my phone overnight? As a rule, it's best to avoid, as it will almost certainly mean you are charging the battery to 100%, despite the convenience of waking up with a full battery in the morning. Each full charge counts as a cycle, and your phone is only built to last for a set number. If you charge overnight, you are guaranteed to miss when the phone exceeds the magic 80% mark that is best for extended long-term life. While most modern smartphones have built-in sensors to shut off charging when they hit 100%, if still turned on they will lose a small amount of battery while idle. What you may get is a trickle charge, as the charger attempts to keep the phone at 100% as your phone naturally loses on its own charge during the night. This means that your phone is constantly bouncing between a full charge and a little bit below that full charge, 99% to 100% and back again during a longer than required charge. It can also heat the phone up, which is also bad for the battery. So, charging during the day is better than charging overnight. Your best policy is to have do not disturb and airplane mode switched on. Better still, you could completely switch off your phone, but that may not be possible if you rely on it as an alarm or wish to be ready to take calls at all hours. Some devices are also set to power up once the cable is connected by default. Even during waking hours, it's best to catch your phone before it hits 100%, or at least not leave the charger supplying charge to an already full battery for too long. If you are leaving it plugged in for a long period of time, removing the case can prevent it overheating. Will fast charging damage my phone? The majority of modern smartphones support some form of fast charging. However, this often requires you to purchase an additional accessory. The industry standard is Qualcomm's Quick Charge, which delivers 18W of power. However, many phone makers have their own fast charge standard, many of which can deliver even faster speeds by adjusting power management code to request a higher voltage charge is sent. Samsung is now even selling a 45W charger. While fast charging itself will not harm your phone's battery, which is built to support it, the heat generated will potentially affect its lifespan. So it's on you to balance the advantages of faster charging with the convenience of quickly topping up your phone before you dash out the door. In the same way that phone batteries don't like extreme heat, they also don't like the cold. So it goes without saying that you should avoid leaving your phone in a hot car, on the beach, next to the oven, out in the snow. Typically, batteries perform at their optimum somewhere between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius, but short periods outside of this should be fine. Can I use any phone charger? Where possible use the charger that came with your phone, as it is sure to have the correct rating. Or make sure that a third-party charger is approved by your phone's manufacturer. Cheap alternatives from Amazon or eBay may harm your phone, and there have been several reported cases of cheap chargers actually catching on fire. That said, your phone should draw only the power that it needs from a USB charger. A smart charger will turn off when the phone battery reaches a certain percentage of charge, rather than constantly starting charging again when the charged battery falls down to 99% trickle charging. Also see, best USB charges for your phone and best wireless charges. Owners of the iPhone 12, 13, 14 or 15 should read Macworld's best MagSafe charger and best iPhone charger roundups. How can I speed up charging? One way to speed up phone charging is to turn on airplane mode while charging. This saves battery by automatically turning off mobile data. Another way to charge is faster is to charge your phone while it is on low power mode. And don't use your phone while it is charging if you have the need for speed. The screen and other components generate heat, and obviously use up existing battery life depending on which apps you are using. Battery memory effect, fact or fiction. The battery memory effect concerns batteries that are regularly charged between 20% and 80% and suggests that the phone might somehow forget that extra 40% you routinely ignore. Lithium batteries, which are in the majority of modern smartphones, do not suffer the battery memory effect, though older nickel-based NIV and NIC batteries do. Nickel-based forget their full capacity if they aren't discharged and charged from 0 to 100%. But, Habitually cycling your lithium-ion battery from 0 to 100% will adversely affect its battery life. Avoid parasite loads. If you charge your phone while using it, for example, while watching a video, you can confuse the battery by creating mini-cycles, during which parts of the battery continually cycle and deteriorate at a faster rate than the rest of the cell. Ideally, you should turn your device off while charging. But, more realistically, 
Just leave it idle while charging. Battery protection settings by phone maker. OnePlus has a battery monitor called Optimized Charging from its Oxygenos 10.0. This is activated under Settings Battery. The smartphone then remembers what time you usually climb out of bed in the morning and only completes the critical last step of charging from 80 to 100% shortly before you get up, that is, as late as possible. Google also offers integrated battery protection for its devices from Pixel 4 onwards. You will find the adaptive charging function under settings battery smart battery. If you use it to charge your device after 9 p.m. and at the same time set an alarm clock between 5 a.m. and 10 a.m., you will have a freshly charged smartphone in your hand when you get up, but the full charge is only completed shortly before the alarm clock rings. Samsung has a battery charge function in selected tablets, such as the Galaxy Tab S6 or Galaxy Tab S7. Protect battery can be found under Settings, Device Maintenance, Battery. When the function is activated, the device simply defines the maximum capacity of the battery to 85%. Apple's optimized battery charging function is primarily intended to reduce the time window in which the battery is heavily charged. Fully charging over 80% is delayed or not even carried out in certain situations. It also depends on your own location, so energy gaps should be avoided when traveling or on vacation, for example. Huawei's battery assistant is called Smart Charge and is available from EMUI 9.1 or Magic UI 2.1. The function can be switched on under Settings, Battery, Additional Settings, which means that charging of the device is stopped at 80% at night and only completed before you get up. Here, too, usage behavior and, if necessary, an alarm clock setting is included in the planning. Sony's Battery Care function is found in the battery settings for many models. The device learns when and for how long users connect the charging cable and adjusts the end of charging so that it coincides with the disconnection of the power supply. Sony devices can also be charged with a maximum charge of 80 or 90 percent. Keep the phone battery cool. As you might expect, heat is a battery's enemy. Don't let it get too hot or too cold, especially when charging. If a phone gets too hot, you will be damaging its battery, so try to keep it cool where possible. Charging the phone from a power bank on the beach in a deck chair is a worst-case scenario for battery health. Try keeping your phone in the shade if you need to charge on a hot summer day. Charging by a window can also lead to excess heat. Read how to cool down a hot iPhone. The cold is also not good for batteries either. If you come in from a long walk in the winter cold, let the phone reach room temperature before you plug in the cable. Heat and batteries do not belong together. Batteries are a bit like humans, at least in the narrow sense that they thrive best around 20 to 25 degrees. Storing battery tips. Don't leave a lithium battery lying around too long at 0%. If you're not using it for a while, leave it with around 50% charge. If you are going to put the phone away for a long time, first charge it to somewhere between 40 to 80% and then turn off the phone. You'll find the battery will drain between 5% and 10% each month and if you let it discharge completely it might become incapable of holding a charge at all. That's probably why an old phone's battery life is so much worse after a few months in a drawer, even when it hasn't been used. More tips for longer phone battery life. Use the power save mode more often. It reduces power consumption and thus reduces the number of cycles. Try your screen's dark mode, as the phone turns off the pixels displaying black, this means you save battery life when the white panels go dark or just turn your phone's brightness down. Turn off background updates for apps you think don't need them, it also reduces power consumption. Turn off or put the phone in airplane mode when you don't need it, such as overnight, preferably with a reasonable battery level left. Don't force quit the apps. Your phone's operating system is best at pausing the apps that aren't needed, it uses lower power consumption than a cold start for each app again and again. Avoid cheap charges and cables. When buying charging cables and plugs, it's a false economy to buy cheap products. Hardware should have a charge control rather than an inferior, cheap circuit, otherwise there is a risk of overcharging. See best phone charges, best charging cables for iPhone, best USB-C cables, and best micro USB charging cables. Thanks for watching this video. For more information touch with us. Comment your opinions